Acquisitions, acquisitions are big. Have you ever thought about selling your company? We're talking with someone who has acquired multiple companies in our space. If you haven't thought about selling, maybe it's time to start thinking about it. I got my man, Josh Album. I've known you for fucking life. Maybe what, almost 20 years, man. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. He's the CEO of GRP. Our core investment thesis to entrepreneurs is entrepreneurship through acquisition. Onboard your business with our company. Because most entrepreneurs, they're the accountant, they're the CFO, they're the lawyer, they're the account manager, they're the they're, fucking janitor. They're, they're everything, right? <laughs> yeah. they're, they're everything. If they can plug their business into our operation and we can accelerate it, plug it into our back office, you focus on your skill set. You do what you built your business on. Let us focus on the account. Let us focus on the legal. Let us focus on the ad ops. And now you have a real team behind you. As you know, in order to win, you need to have laser focus. You're a sports guy. Your point guard's horrible. You, you suck. If your center's too short, you're going to get dominated on the boards. So we're acquiring an all-star team of entrepreneurs. Every acquisition, we've grown at least 3x in the first year. It's nothing like being home. Just shot a banger, another banger. There's bangers after bangers. The shit doesn't stop. So make sure you don't miss that episode. Shout out to Ringba. Ringba's doing big things in paper call. We're gonna blow up paper call with Ringba. We got the paper call revolution book, which is changing people's lives. Providing tons of value for the community. Make sure you're reading the book. Shout out the Afia Awards, my man, Darren Black. New York City, right across the river. LFG show is nominated for best podcast of the year. Fucking pumped up. We've only been doing this a few months, but the love that we're getting in our DMs when I travel all around the world, around the country, there's nothing but pure love out there. It makes me feel good. Give me that warm and fuzzy feeling. If you like what you're seeing, you're getting a lot of value out of this, make sure you like, you comment, you subscribe. We got a lot more fantastic stuff coming along the pipeline. The stuff that'll move the needle for you like it has for me. So get your fucking seatbelts buckled. We're going to bring the fucking heat and let's fucking go, baby. We're back, we're in Jersey. We did four episodes the last two days in Miami, in Jersey, and I saved the best for last. Guys, acquisitions, acquisitions are big. Have you ever thought about selling your company? I'm gonna give you a fucking banger today. We're talking with someone who has acquired multiple companies in our space. If you haven't thought about selling, maybe it's time to start thinking about it. I got my man, Josh Album. I've known you for fucking what? Maybe what, almost 20 years, man. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. He's the CEO of GRP. These guys are doing big thing and the big things in the digital marketing lead generation space. It's a fucking pleasure to have you on the show, my man. Thanks for having Let's me. Let's fucking go. It's good, good to one. see you always. <laughs> so guys, um, man, I, we, I met you uh, at a company called Educational Direct. We were doing student loan consolidation, right? I was in the call center motivating people, throwing chairs. Crazy fucking environment, man. You were more on the media side, right? I was buying media. I was yeah. in the marketing department. Uh, it was my first job right out of, uh, right out of college. And it learned a lot and set me on my career path and met a tremendous people, amazing people like yourself, and uh, created a really great network for me to continue to grow from. Yeah, and, and guys, I mean, this, you won't, it's funny thing. You won't find anything about that company online. You, you Google it, nothing comes online. It's crazy. Crazy culture, amazing culture. Uh, a great culture of learning, a great culture of success, a great culture of positivity. And I think as, as not only I think you can attest to, but probably was a big motivator or pivotal part of your career yeah. in helping you achieve what you've, what you've achieved, yeah. because it's all about who you surround yourself with and, and what, what you can learn from. And the people who are running that organization were fantastic. Yeah. And the thing is, there are so many good success stories that came out of it. People have gone on to do amazing things. And when you, and again, I, I wasn't an owner, I was an employee, but man, the shit that I learned, and I always tell people, everyone wants to start their own business, but you gotta fucking, to go from point A to point Z, you gotta learn, you gotta, you gotta learn. And, and, and the good thing is that I got paid well, I got to be me, I'm, I'm throwing chairs, like, oh, I, you know, the, 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 the team let me be me, you know, Eric let me be me, and, and he, he saw that, he wasn't looking to micromanage anybody, we just, we just fucking blew up, it was Look, nuts. Look, I think there's, there's two different, you know, trains of, of, of thought in, in, in how you uh, learn and how you become the individual you are or the entrepreneur you are, you could go to school and you can learn a lot of theory. Yeah. Or you could do it in practice. And we, you and I did it in practice, yeah. right? I didn't go and get an MBA. You didn't go and get an MBA. No. But we did get an MBA. Yeah. We got an MBA. More than an MBA. More yeah. than an MBA yeah. because we were in it. We were doing it. We were living it. We were breathing it. It was happening and coming at us for mm -hmm. us to react to and, and, and react on the fly and learn on the fly. And yeah. I think throwing people into the fire and having that, that ability to, to just 
learn from, you know, teach, see one, do one, teach one? That, that environment, man, going back, damn, we moved so fast over there, right? And we broke shit, but like we figured it out right away. And that, that's really where I got my, and I was always go, it was like the perfect people, the right people in the right seats is what it was. And I was like, we we're go, 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 man. And we were, fuck, I remember we rented out a hotel for a month out there, right? Where was it? In fly. I mean, and people were coming in the office seven in the morning on the phone closing. It was June madness. We were just going nuts, man. But like everything, man, what, what great memories those were. And that that really set us up to you know, help us get to where we are now. Great culture. Culture yeah. of winning. Yeah, culture of winning. Exactly. So let's fast forward now. G GRP, like, what, what does GRP do? You're the CEO of GRP. I know you guys are great at what you do and, and a lot of aspects. To tell the audience what you guys so are the doing. So the, yeah. the, 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 the core principle and, and thesis and, and uh, operation of what GRP does is um, we are a marketing technology company. We specialize in customer acquisition, marketing technology, cohort analytics. Um, the business was really founded on, on email marketing, database marketing. Mm -hmm. um, and so as, when I came over, the business was primarily involved in customer acquisition in the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, when you had a, I didn't know you that. Had, you had a crystal ball uh, of how customer acquisition and lead generation worked because the UK was five years behind us at that mm. point in time, and this is in 2010. So we took our, our skills and our learning and our know-how and brought it to the UK. We were very successful in, in doing that, and we mm. ended up selling that business. Uh, and that was a business that was a joint venture between two companies. Mm -hmm. We rolled that business up, um, and that was pretty much around maybe 2015. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we really focused our attention on diversifying and building a bigger media company and how do you do that and first you look at the data and you figure out okay what's analogous to the data sets we have we were big in consumer finance we were big in um in uh in, in email marketing so how do we how do we not only diversify from the data set and the vertical but how do we also diversify out of the type of media that we're you know we're, we're publishing which was email at the time mm -hmm. and the first thing that we noticed was Ed, online education had a huge, strong affinity to. This is like 2015 around that time. This is 2015 to yeah. to you know our data sets yeah. to people who were looking for access to credit, and that unlocked a huge potential to us. It became our fastest growing vertical, and yeah. we became one of the largest publishers in in, in de, you know, generating leads and 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 customers and prospective students for schools, and fast forward to 2020. COVID happens mm. and, you know, I'm sitting at home working across from my father and, you know, you see the news, you see the trends in what's happening in your data and you see that, you know, personal loans and consumer finance are skyrocketing, but the floor got pulled out from underneath it because the lenders pulled out, mm -hmm. but online education kept going yeah. because the narrative was, you know, you need to be home and you need to be, you can learn from, you know, your living room. Yep. So budgets were flying out. Demand was flying out. So I called up our biggest agency at the time, and I said, I, I need more budget. And he was like, we don't have any more budget for you. And I was like, he's like, I'm having a little bit of cash flow problems, COVID. And I said, I'm going to buy you. Wow. And he laughed. And I said, no, I'm not kidding. You're going to come to have lunch with me and Gary, and we're going to buy you. Would you be interested? And he said, yeah. So fast forward, our first acquisition was in 2021. We grew that business, Path 56 Media, 3x in the first year. Uh, we doubled revenue. And he, we, we took an existing web property that, that he had was sitting on a shelf. He couldn't get the, you know, couldn't get the developers at the time or the energy to do it. Um, he, was, he was dabbling in some, some call center stuff. We took that over. And that, you know, that one business line, the College Review, you know, does over a million dollars a year in revenue, was sitting on a shelf because he couldn't mm. get it done. He didn't have the time, probably. Um, right? Didn't have the he time. He didn't have the resources. Bandwidth, you know, yeah. as as a, you know, and I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but our core, you know, uh, investment thesis to entrepreneurs is entrepreneurship through acquisition. Yeah. Onboard your business with our company, because most entrepreneurs they're the accountant, they're the CFO, they're the lawyer, they're the account manager, they're the they're, fucking janitor. They're, they're everything, right? <laughs> yeah. they're, they're everything. So, if they can plug their business into our operation. And we can accelerate it and, mm -hmm. and they plug it into our back office. You know, you focus on your skill set. You do what you built your business on. Let mm -hmm. us focus on the accounting. Let us focus on the legal. Let us fo focus on the ad ops. Mm -hmm. And now you have a real team behind you. You have capital behind you. Mm -hmm. So after that acquisition, um, we acquired 
the remaining equity back in uh, a company called Jobs Online, which we were a minority partner in at the time, and it gets 100% of its traffic from, from Google SEM, and uh, it just, you know, it, but it wasn't getting its focus. It wasn't getting, you know, as you know, in order to win, you need to have laser focus. You yeah. need to be able to be, you know, just in it every day. And no one was really, this, you know, the captain of the ship. Took that business, layered it into our, mm. our business, and we, I think we 10 x the business. Wow. Uh, it was doing 2,000 registrations a day, and now it's doing 15,000 registrations wow. a day. And then from there, we acquired an SMS marketing platform, which was very symbiotic to our, our story of looking at email and understanding how email engages with consumers and being able to reach that demographic. Well, we should be able to do the same thing in mobile because mobile is the most transformative thing since the rise of the internet, right? Um, everyone's on a device. Everything's happening in front of your face. Yep. So that was our fourth acquisition. And then we acquired an ESP. Feedblitz, uh, which is amazing, um, being an email marketing company as the Makes as, as its founding, you know, foundation of, mm. of, of what the building was, what the business was built on is is tremendous, and and controlling that and 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 having a real customer base and building a real SaaS product really has mm. tremendous benefits and and vertical integration thesis like through its core, right? Mm. And then we acquired another online education agency, Provide Media. Uh, who Kyle and Craig were really working uh, hand in hand, getting budgets from one another. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we acquired our call center in Mesa, Arizona, because a lot of people needed to, um, especially in education, you need to have an onshore presence from mm -hmm. clients yeah. or from, from a lot of other um, you know, intangible aspects that an on onshore call center, as you know, you've been in the call yeah. center business and it's tremendously successful and congratulations on Thank all you. that. And I think you know, that, that was, again, core to the vertical integration thesis. The, the, the leads were, were generating from our owned and operated properties are now going into this life cycle of a call center and email, and we're touching mm -hmm. the consumer in a lot of different touch points. And the last acquisition was we, um, we, we put someone in business for, uh, for the mass tort vertical, mm -hmm. wow. uh, something we wanted, always wanted to get into, but I'm not going to wake up one day and say, you know what, I think we should be in mass tort. Mm -hmm. Let's go because I don't have the relationships, I don't have the contacts, I don't have the know-how. So it's a, it's a great diversified media machine, and the best part about it is we're bringing in amazing people and amazing entrepreneurs, because you need, you know, you're a sports guy. If your point guard's horrible, yeah. you, you suck. Yeah. You know, if, you're, if your center's too short, you're going to get dominated on the board. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're acquiring an all-star team of entrepreneurs, and, and knock on wood to date, you know, I don't know it's not wood, but this is, um, every, every acquisition we've grown at least three X in the first year. That's incredible. And we're very, very selective on who we allow to bring into this organization. Yeah. You have to, culture is paramount to, to what we do. And, you know, you could have one poisonous, you know, acquisition that could destroy the culture, can destroy the, you know, the trajectory of the business. And that's not something we're looking to do. We're looking to go as fast as possible, but not rush. Great. I mean, that the the story, and I knew I knew some of the the, the stuff. But I didn't know how in depth. I didn't realize it was that many acquisitions, and it makes sense. It's all connected. You need the call center, squeeze more juice out of leads. You need ESP for email marketing, right? And then you're looking at the verticals. To, legal is fucking hot as hell, man. I know it is. I mean, we try to, but it's it's hard to crack. Very hard to crack. I mean, Camp Lejeune was running for how long? People Look, made a lot a, of money. Yeah. It's the same. You know, it's the same thing for solar. Yeah. You know, you're the king of solar. I'm not waking up and I'm saying I'm going to yeah. start a solar business. How am I going to do that unless I hire someone who's the expert in that business, yeah. right? It's all business development is hard. That's what really got us onto this accelerated acquisition path. You know, we did it. We said, wow, this is pretty good at this. You know, maybe we should do it again. But the hardest thing to do in business is sales and business development. Mm -hmm. But if you can, if I call you up and I say, hey, David, you know, uh, I think I can sell you some leads. You know, this is what my company does. Maybe, maybe you're not going to call me back or you're not gonna return my email. But if I call and I leave a message that says, hey, this is Josh Allen, CEO of GRP Ads. I'm interested in buying your business. You're probably gonna give me yeah, a call back. Yeah, you start thinking about it. Yeah. And now there's a 10% chance I'm gonna buy your business, but there's a 90% chance that I'm gonna work with you. Yeah, and you get to know the person more intimately. You know they're for real, they're bullshitting, all that stuff. Establish and then that, a relationship. Yeah, you establish a relationship. And uh, there's so much to unpack out of that. And I think the biggest thing for me, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I, I interviewed uh, Momentum Solar yesterday, a big client of mine. 
the, the CEO and CRO, they cemented a term in my brain called collapsing time frames. <clears throat> and essentially, that's what you guys are doing. You know, time is money. That's the one thing. You could always make more money, you could do, but you can't replace the second we just lost, right? So when you're buying out another company, acquiring them, you're really collapsing time frames, not only for yourself, but for the business owner as well. And I think one thing that our industry, a lot of talented people, you know, I've been, I've been with your team, I've been with Gary, we've been all over the world. We were in Dominican Republic at this, at this event, Pelican, a phenomenal event. Tons of great, talented people there, but a lot of these people are solopreneurs or they have one or two people and they're gifted at generating leads or getting people to click on ads and they're putting up big numbers, but they don't have a CFO, they don't have the legal, and then they get burned. And you see what's going on with the ACA, tons of people owe a lot of fucking money other People are nervous, right? So, but when you have the team, not only do you collapse time frames, but you protect yourself. And then you, well, one bad campaign, one guy doesn't pay you, you're out of business, man. So I think that's the beauty of having a team with experience. And going back to our days of educational direct, those, that same template that was employed there, it's kind of the same template that you're using now with more experience. Well, yeah, I mean, I think, you know? you know, there's, there's, you can make a quick buck in this industry yep. and you can make money. But if you want to build a big business, that requires a different level of commitment and a different level of focus mm -hmm. and a different level of capital. And I think at a different level of team yep. and some people want to commit to that. And some people don't because, you know, we've been in this space a long time, you know, as, as fast as someone comes on the scene yeah, is gone. as fast as, as they're gone. Mm -hmm. And so you have a lot of young kids, you have a lot of, um, entrepreneurs or want to be entrepreneurs who can you know, learn how to buy media and make a quick buck and might not do the right thing and might not create a, a, a reputation for themselves or establish a longstanding, you know, company in this space. But they're two different, you know, skill sets to have. Yep. And I think if you make the distinction that you want to build a big company, it just requires a, a, a different type of commitment and focus. Yeah, and then it comes back to talk, talking about at sports teams, right? You got the coach, you got the point guard, you got the center, you got this, you got that. Looking back at the Patriots, Tom Brady, I mean, Bill Belichick, perfect combination. It's right. funny because Tom Brady won a Super Bowl on his own, Belichick hasn't had much success, but them two together, they were like well, dynasties, look, right? It's, yeah. it's perfect. It, yeah. it's, I'm so happy you said that because you, even though I'm the CEO of GRP, the, the, the executive team, my partners are yeah. the best because you can't, I couldn't do this by myself and people who do do it by themselves wish I think that they had a deeper bench from partnerships because you can really delegate and mm. really hone in on the specific skill sets that your partners have. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm a great people guy. I'm good with numbers, but I'm not the best with numbers. So I rely on my other partner with yeah. numbers and we you know, are in the spreadsheets and, yeah. you know, sales and having Greg and an amazing you know, personality out there representing our company and, and, and bringing in the opportunities, he's amazing, right? Mm. Gary, uh, Gary speaks for himself. I mean, Gary is, is, a, is a serial, yeah. serial entrepreneur. And Gary's amazing. Who had, who's had a tremendous success in this space, yeah. who, you know, is, is so wise to be able to give perspective in certain things that we've never experienced before, yep. but Gary has. You know, that, that creates a winning formula. It, it, there are intangible aspects to that cohesiveness, I mm. think, and that's really what can set people apart from just throwing up a landing page and selling a few leads. Yeah, and what do you say, because obviously when you acquire a company or right, anything, one of the concerns, and then I went through the acquisition process with a private equity firm um, a year and a half ago, and it, we'll talk about that in a bit too, and I learned a lot, it was eye-opening. It, it wound up falling through, we were deep in the thing, and one of the reasons it fell through was that the verticals and solar just took a deep dive last year, I think 250, 300 solar companies went out of business. Obviously, a lot of them were a client. So our earnings went down when they did the quality of earnings the first quarter, all this stuff. And they, they all gave us a evaluation of 40% lower. And they're actually 100% right. If we had timed that three months earlier, we would have exited, right? So I learned so much. We can talk about that in a bit. But, you know, at first, my partner and I, like, do you, there, do you want to give out our equity? Do you want, we want to dilute ourselves because we built this thing. Is it the right thing to do? What if we, this company's gonna take X amount? And we still would have been held on. There was like second bite of the apple. You know, the idea is that you're, you'll, get, you'll, you'll sell the second time and you get, you know, you get a smaller piece, but it's a bigger amount, right? So that kind of delayed us. That delayed us a couple, maybe two or three months before we decided to pull the trigger. And I think it cost us at the end of the day because the timing got fucked up. So what do you say to someone listening? Like, ah, I, you know, this is my baby. I don't want to give up equity. What, what, what do you, because that's- So I think yeah. you're, you're spot on, right? The, yeah. the, the subjective nature of someone's company that they built, right? That 
that they've- It's like your baby, they, yeah. They, it is their baby. Yeah. They have every right to put what value they want mm. on their business, right? They, mm. they have, there's intangibles and tangibles, right? There's, yeah. there's math and there's, there's not math. Um, so first off, we, we come to that process knowing that and we're, we're, we're dealing with people and we're dealing with something that's very important to, to these individuals. It's all about where you want to go and where you think you can take your company. And we, the, the, our core investment thesis is we're acquiring a majority stake, mm -hmm. right? We're leaving current ownership with a large equity stake. It can be anywhere between 20 to 50%, 49% still in that equity mm -hmm. stake, which gets profit distributions. They get an executive salary, mm -hmm. right? And so the, talk about the second bite at the apple where there's an, a liquidity event now. There's an some type of earnout, which isn't traditional earnout, but mm -hmm. we can get into those details later yeah. if you decide to you want to join. <laughs> and then a second bite at the apple. Because yeah. you can you can go like this by yourself and maybe get there, or you can plug in and tap into our multiple and get there faster. Collapse high and first. you're gonna get the benefit yep. of trading at the at the top line. We're not there's no there's no, you know, if you trade at ten, if I trade at ten and I buy you for four. I'm saying, oh, you're gonna, you're, I'm only going to pay you a six multiple. No, we're yeah. saying, come on with us. I trade at 10. Even though I bought you for four, you're still going to trade at 10 when we sell. Yep. You know, so that's, that's part of the you know, snapshot into, into, the, into the, 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 you know, the process of how we, we acquire the acquisitions. And, but you're right. It, it's, it's, it's a human, there's a human element to this. And I think if you come at it with a human element rather than, you know, a number or a variable and treating you like a number and treating you like a variable and that, you know, Hey, I'm going to pay you X. This is what it's going to be. If you don't like it, take it or leave it. Yeah. I think you have to, you have to be, there's emotional intelligence into this whole, yeah. you know, process. And yeah, people make decisions based on emotion, right? That's what, and they justify look, it with logic. Look, <laughs> That's they have every right to. to, it's the business they yeah. built from the, from the ground yeah. up. But you know, there are core private equity, VC, whatever you want to talk about and call it, models of how things are are valued yeah and that's it and it's ed sometimes it's educating um these entrepreneurs these small businesses into the, the process of how it works and i think once you back into that and you talk about how how it works and what we're where we're looking to go i think it you know makes a lot of sense which is why we've been successful at it and i think one thing you said that resonated with me listen i started my company in 2016 i started getting a lot of traction in 2019 started to grow tremendously man and then I have a partner, I was doing business, he wasn't my partner at the time, but we decided in late 2021, like, hey, maybe we should merge our companies together. Because he was doing data, I'm doing a live lease, there's a lot of synergy there. I enjoyed working with him, the guy was always trustworthy, even when things were bad, like, we got to work with each other in the good and bad times, and we, we, we liked each other, and we complimented each other. But at first I was nervous, like, you know, I don't know how many, maybe I had five or six people on my team, I was more like a solopreneur, doing a million different things. And I was a little nervous because now instead of me being 100%, I'm, I'm going to have 50% equity. And you, know, so I started, you start thinking all this crazy stuff. I decided to pull the trigger. And when I pulled the trigger, wow. I mean, at first, there was a little bit of a, we'll talk about that too, the, the cultural fit. How, you know, I, I moved a little different than he moved, but then we, we meshed. It took like three or four months, but then, then things started to click. But bro, man, I inherited so many people on the ops side. Like, I'm not an ops person. I team, had like, right? Yeah, team. I had a team. team. Age data, there's only a few months left of this. A lot of different ways to monetize data. Data is a very broad term. There's a lot more money in it. You already spent the money. Let's just say it cost you $10 for a Medicare lead. You make a million dollars in sales, you really only made a hundred thousand bucks. And you might not get paid by your advertiser. What if I can get an extra 50 cents, dollar, two dollar, three dollar per lead in perpetuity? What does that do to my marketing campaign? What does that do for the stress of the profits of my company? A percentage or two at those kind of numbers are huge. Yep. as moving the needle. So for us, what I love about age data, the, the, the hard part's already been done. Now it's just a revenue left for your company. And what would the extra 10, 20, $30,000 a week do for your business? Absolutely. All of our big partners are making hundreds of thousands, if not millions a year with us. They're never gonna have this gold rush again. And then this one, people always wonder, like, Dave, do you work? Because they see me traveling. I'm, I'm working, doing what I enjoy doing. I'm connecting with people. I'm talking to people like you. I'm building this fucking crazy network. So but my team's handling, they're, they're handling the operations. They're handling the stuff I'm bringing to the table. And that's what's allowed us to grow. And then when we, we merged, man, damn, our revenue went through the fucking roof. So much so that we started getting attention. And then people wanted to buy us out. 
You know, at first I thought it was a joke. I'm getting these emails. Oh, we were interested in buying you out. I'm like, this ain't fucking for real. But then it was for real. I'd go to like solar shows. People are like, oh, I saw you do this interview. We'd be interested in inquiring you. And bro, I'm listening to that person versus someone trying to sell me a lead or do a JV. Like, you know, someone's talking about lots of money. You're going to listen to them. Eight figures. Like, I'm going to listen to yeah. them. So the point I'm trying to say is that for people listening, like, oh, I'm used to doing it my way. You got to step outside your comfort zone. I, I was nervous at first. I'm like, what? You know, I'm giving them control. It was kind of weird at first, but now I see the wisdom of all of that. And that's why I can do what I do, what I'm good at. Look, real executives yeah. are, don't let their day control them. They control yeah, their day. Absolutely. Right? And yeah. it's something that I've learned as, as I've grown as, as an entrepreneur and as an executive, as a CEO of, of making sure that you know, the, the team can, can operate and can make, are empowered to make decisions. Yeah. Right? They feel that they are in charge. They have mm -hmm. control. And because you trust them, they have control. And that allows you to be successful and scale, you know, in a true executive fashion. So I think you're spot on with, yeah. with something that you didn't necessarily think of that now you can. And that just brings back to, you know, collapsing the, the time frames, the time frames yeah. which is something similar that Steve Jobs said when he gave us a speech, I think at Stanford University, which is you can always connect the dots backwards. You can't connect them forwards. Mm. Yeah. But knowing that can help you. Connect the dots forward. Connect, yeah. connect the dots forward. Yeah. So as you look back and all the acquisitions we've done, I can connect the dots backwards and all yeah. every acquisition that we've done to know, and they've all been successful, but working with certain people of how I think that this is, oh, this seems similar to this situation. So now I think we should approach it with this yeah. or this is this business. And, you know, all the businesses we, we've acquired, they were all on our ARAP. We were doing business with them. So wow. we, we had relationships with them. We knew we were intricately working with them because it goes back to culture, right? Yeah. You know, it's very rare that I'm just going to call up someone random. We're going to layer them into this organization because we want to make sure we could, we love each other. Yeah. We can work together in the good and the bad. Wow. You said some great stuff. I love that you can't connect the dots forward. You can connect them backwards. That, that's, that's huge right there. Love that. And then what you just said, I, I was going to ask you what's, how do you find these companies? And it's what you just said about there in your AP and AR, that makes all the sense in the world. So it's kind of like me, my partner Ed and I, we were doing business together for three, four years. Right. And then we got to see how we worked together. We enjoyed working with each other, very similar, same values. And then we decided to merge. And it's not like, you know, I'm just, it's, it's like the same thing like dating, getting married, same crap. So, so it's exactly the right, it's <laughs> yeah. exactly right. So before we have, you know, we'll get on a phone call, we'll do some Zooms, but, you know, to dig deeper, we have to have people come here or we will fly to meet them in person yeah. and to go to dinner and to play golf Sniff test. or to hang out, yeah. Wh whatever it is, because you, that's important. It, it's very important. Yeah. To us, it's the most important. It's culture. Because it we've passed, culture. That, we passed on acquisitions that, that just doesn't feel right. Yeah. For, for the audience, listen, what, what's your ideal candidate? And it's a great set. People do, uh, and what we'll get more in depth. It's, it's yeah. tar any business that's making anywhere between 500000 to call it two and a half, three million in EBITDA. Okay. Um, you know, because we think that the effectuation of growth at that company's level, we can, you know, three exit. As you mm. get into larger businesses that take longer to integrate, um, it's harder to grow them. And that's mm. where m and I think, gets screwed up, right? Because most of the time, m and doesn't work. They're not mm. integrated right. It's not a culture fit. Um, you know, people are told that they can still have the autonomy to run their business, but they aren't. It's all bullshit, and, yeah. You know, and, 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 yeah. And a lot of the time, it's true, and it depends on the partner you have, mm -hmm. but you know, we, we, I encourage anyone who's listening to go talk to one of our portfolio companies and hear from their mouth of what, what their experience has been in, in joining our team and, and working with us, and if they feel they have true autonomy or not. And I would be willing to bet that every one of them would tell you 100% yes. Yeah. They make the decisions and I'm there to help them be a sounding board of maybe think differently or help prioritize differently. Or, you know, maybe they didn't have a partner before that can give them different, you know, advice or opinions or analysis on certain things. Yeah, a different way of looking at things. Yeah. And that's what you need as a business owner. You gotta, if you're seeing things this way, you're missing out, right? And, that's what the expert, experts say. You have the legal. You got Gary with all his experience, right? Gary's been in this industry for decades. He's a wildly successful person. I always say success leaves clues. Big tenant of our show. And you guys have a formula that freaking works. We stick to down. the formula. We're, yeah. not, we're not straying from the formula. We're not looking to acquire horizontal EBITDA. Oh, that's a shiny object. Look, yeah. that made, they make $5 million in EBITDA. If we think we layer it in, it makes our valuation. 
we don't want to do that at all. We want to acquire companies that have vertical integration within what we're looking to achieve, you know, fill a gap that we can't do, mm. a skill set we don't have, a role we don't have, a vertical we don't have, and build it from there. Um, yeah. You know, and layer it in with 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 our you know core skills that that we know that we can take something from you know this to this. Got it. So we talked about the the revenue, five hundred thousand to two and a half to three million EBITDA was essentially net profit. You know, so everyone's yep. so you don't think it's top line. It's different with top line yes. and then profit earnings I mean, before interest. Yeah, taxes. learn that hard in the solar world. And depreciation. Yeah. One thing I good, good, one of my mentors says uh, I this is what the fuck you, uh, revenue, top line is, sa is insanity. Revenue, no, Bob, fuck, I can't believe I forgot. Top line is van, no, top line is vanity. Profit is sanity. Cash is king. It's really what it comes down to, man. Because you have, you could, you know how many, there's so many companies putting a big numbers top line, but they're, they're more, they don't know how to run the business. And if you're someone's putting a lot of top line money, but you, you're wasting money on a lot of shit, this is where. I mean, the merger might make sense, or not the merger acquisition makes sense. Someone comes in and buttons up. Since, you, since you start pissing away a lot of money. I was doing the same thing. I was pissing away money on this and that, and I didn't realize it until the end of the month. I'm like, man, I made all this money. Why don't I have that money in my bank? Where the fuck did it go? I thought I made X amount, and then it's cut in half. Well, I, you know what? I oversubscribed on my, my, my SaaS products. I got hit with overages because no one was watching it. And all of a sudden, those overages go another 20 grand. 20 grand here, 5 grand here, 2 grand here. And there's like 40, 50 grand. I'm like, damn, half my profit's gone. You know what we call that? What? The loose change program. Yeah, that's what it is. Right? Yeah. It's there's loose change all over the floor. Yeah. And if you just figure out, you know, if you figured out how to make an extra $500 a day. Huge. Okay? That's $15,000 a month. Yeah. You didn't do anything. You didn't do anything. You just figured out, you know what, if I change this and I do this and I do this and at a time to focus, I made $500. Mm -hmm. Well, if everybody in your organization does that times five, that's powerful stuff, yeah. you know? So you don't, you, I, I challenge myself and my mentors have challenged me to think bigger, right? Which is, which is where you get to grow and where your growth becomes, mm -hmm. I think, as an executive and a CEO. But uh, the other side is we don't, we, we're, we're all about, the low hanging fruit and the loose change and how to optimize and how to ext extrapolate the value of what we're doing. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of people don't have the time, like what you're saying, because they're all over the place to really dig in and, and things I, get missed. Yeah, I think they don't have the time because they're, they're thinking on how do I make the next dollar? And, and then you have, there's so much turbulence in our industry about these, this, like AC is hot for a couple of years, goes to crap, what's the next thing? So there's always a scrambling mindset is what it is. And that's why, teaming up with you and, and, and getting acquired helps you. You guys know, you already have evergreen verticals that are working, right? And then you're looking for newer ones and you, you apply that formula. So I was going to ask you, <clears throat> what's your ideal, someone listen, watching the show that's a digital marketer affiliate, what's your ideal candidate for acquisition? What verticals are in? Like, what are you guys hungry for right now? So like, you're you know, a perfect fit. Obviously, you know, insurance is a, bit, is, is, is a hot vertical mm -hmm. that we're looking to, to grow into. Yep. Home services is, is, is a big vertical. We're always looking to expand our, our reach within Ed education, mm -hmm. um, senior vertical is a big vertical for us that we'd look to expand. There is a lot of affinity products that I think you know, that touch that demo. Um, tort looking to build out in more. I think skill sets from you know media buying. Uh, mm -hmm. So we'd love to enhance our, our internal media buying capabilities here. So layering and skill sets are a company that that fits that. Uh, click to call is, is a big one. We we tried debt that was tough not to crack. Yeah, that's tough, but, man. But it, got, it got really saturated. It, it's yeah. got saturated. I think a lot of the bigger players in the space have cherry picked a lot of the value out of, out, yeah. of, out of the data. So, um, but definitely an analogous, you know, data set to, to our customer demographic. Mm. Um, and, you know, content, content's a big one for us, mm. uh, that will help obviously, uh, drive a lot of the growth in the ESP because the ESP is is, is you say content, you're talking like native ad generation? So really more like uh, blog, okay. um, you know, recipes, coupons, sports content, yeah. um, stuff like that. And then data, like obviously data pens, data analytics. Yeah. Um, you know, there are comp the companies we're talking to in that space that are really impressive. And I think the more you know about your customer and the more that you can create a lot of um, value from your data sets to, to deliver the right message at the right time, mm. you know, to the exact person in a, in a much more refined way. And we're working on really building out our infrastructure behind the scenes to be able to handle that. Because the biggest thing, like I said before, is 
you can't only acquire a company, you have to integrate them. Yeah. And it's hard. That's the process. It's not, it's, yeah. And a lot of people don't want to take the time to do it because it's, it, let me tell you something, it's brain damage, yeah. some of it, right? Getting there hooked up, they're reporting in analytics, the compliance, it's not. That was kind of the, when I merged, when we merged, that was the biggest thing. It's like, now we got these emails, it got confusing. It's, it's but if tough. you don't yeah. do it, yeah. if you don't do it, that's how you break. And you've done it so many times where now it's like, it's easier. If you're like, yeah, first you have time, a template. Yeah. You follow yeah, you the, the template, template yeah. right? You follow, yeah. you follow the template. You don't, you don't stray from, from the template. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think it, once you start to you know, go off path and, and not stay on, stay focused on the trajectory of what you're looking to do, and that comes back to we're not looking to acquire companies that maybe have a lot of EBITDA or do a lot of revenue, but, you know, just because you're in maybe, you know, e-com doesn't mean that you're going to fit into this organization. We yeah. know how to grow you because we have to be fair to you too, right? We're, you're trusting us just like yeah. we're trusting you. It's a, it's a partnership. I love that you say that too, because really our, our business is a relationship business and how you, and that's one, that's, I think that's why you guys have an edge too, that you've been doing this for so long. You have so many relationships and you've worked with so many people that you kind of know when the right, who's the right fit rather than going to cold. Then you have the templates, you have all the, everything all, locked in, you know, checked off from point reputation, A to point Reputation, look, reputation, <clears throat> we, we stand behind our reputation. Um, I've been in this space for, I think it's 2005. Yeah, um, you know, 20 years. 20 years. Right? Gary's probably 30 years. You so, guys probably have like 100 years of experience you know, so on your team. So if you walk around in this space and you, you know, whether it's my company's name, our company's name, uh, my name, I, I don't think you would find. You won't. I, I'd be very surprised yeah. to hear that we did something that wasn't you know above board or we did the wrong thing we treated you improperly you know that's how we we, we treat everyone with respect and and we always do the right thing at 930 ventures and, and grp and we you know we, we we stand behind that and i think that helps us have conversations because when we bring an entrepreneur into our network and we fold them into our into our you know hold co company or our, mm. our portfolio company i just brought in your network yes and if you don't truly <laughs> believe yeah. that that yeah. that's not gold, because yeah. I'm never gonna know who's behind your doors, yeah. but you have to want to be able to open your door. And that's how one plus one equals ten versus two. Right. Yeah, yeah. People, that's I'm glad you mentioned that because people forget about that stuff, man. And again, success leaves clues. This is it's <laughs> like the six degrees is Kevin Bacon, yeah. right? You, know, you could always connect, but if I don't, you know, if I don't connect to you, then I don't open up those 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 relationships behind you, which the next acquisition could be sitting behind. 100%. That's great. So let's say someone listening on the show, and I would love nothing more than someone in our audience to be acquired by your company. I know, listen, I, we don't put people that are bullshit artists on our show. We put people I track record success. It's my that. reputation too. Of course. <clears throat> if I'm putting people that are just doing bullshit, I'm going to be associated with no one's going to want to watch my show, right? So I would love for something like that to happen. And so let's, tell, let's, let's imagine, I don't know, next week, two weeks from now, you, someone, you get a call or you communicate with someone that watched the show and you start talking to them. What's the process look like? How long does it take from, from A to Z? Look, we'll, we'll move as fast as they want to move. Mm -hmm. um, you know, phone call happens, get on a Zoom, tell them about our, our, you know, what they, they haven't already heard on, mm -hmm. on this podcast, um, and then get them here mm -hmm. for dinner, golf, meeting in person, really dig into the synergies, mm -hmm. talk about where we're going and what our overall goal is. And then from there, get, go a little deeper, share mm. some top level numbers, understand what's important to them. What do they want for their business, right? Because if someone's living on Saturn yeah. and thinks their business is worth $100 million, let's not waste each other's time. Yeah. So we try to flush that stuff out before, but look, I mean, we, we've closed businesses in 90 days. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I wasn't expecting to hear that quickly. I, I, I know how you guys move, so Some I'm not surprised. Some take longer. Yeah. Some what's, take what's longer. The, what's the average? <clears throat> I would say, <clears throat> I would probably say the average is like anywhere between 90 to 100 days. Okay. 90 to 120 pretty, days. Pretty quick. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, with us, and we, we were two months into it, and then like everything even went the other way. It was private equity, and I think, uh, I think they were saying it's up to like 180 days is what it would be, right? Like yeah, look, the more, now let me be clear, <clears throat> the more complicated and sophisticated the potential acquisition target is the the longer that yeah you know that takes right um different levels of due diligence different aspects of due diligence but yeah i mean we we, we move fast you know we yeah. want to make sure that because every you know every minute we're not you're not in this organization yeah. is a, we feel is a lost opportunity not only for you but for us yeah. 
I love that you say you move fast. And I, I'm a testament of that. I mean, I'm part of, I feel at Education Direct, it was like we, we, we got immersed in this culture of moving fast. The sky's right? falling, right? Yeah, sky's falling. We got to fucking, we got to break last month's record. And I got, I got indoctrinated in that. And I also think where we live, we live in North Jersey, right next, right across the river from New York yeah. City, right? It's it's just, a look, it's a total mentality. It's a, the New York Northeast mentality. Yeah. But it's also having goals. Like, yeah. you know, what, what's the goal? What's the projection? Did we hit it? We didn't. Why? How could we have done better? We're not, we're not here to blame anybody, right? We're not here to say, oh, you didn't hit your goal. You know, shame on you. It's, it's about being accountable. Everyone's accountable to yeah. one another, but you have to be able to, to have goals, you know? Yeah, it comes down to results and it comes down to work. What do, what do we do? And that's one thing at Education Direct, you know, things are getting fucking broke. What happened? What caused it to break? Let's, let's fix it. Let's figure out not to do it again and let's go. And then we're going to break some other shit and move. Let's keep going. Boom, yeah, boom, boom. And, Just keep and, going. And it, it's who you hire as as team members, right? We like to hire former collegiate athletes because yeah. their ability yes. to not only problem solve, but persevere and their discipline competitiveness. and their competitiveness yeah. and they're goal oriented and they have a culture of winning teamwork, teamwork, yeah. right? So that's core to who we are as, as a group. So yeah, I have a producer of show chance quarterback in college, man. I mean, yeah, you're right. Athletes, great salespeople, great, Athletes, people, and they're in the military, high ranking military. Military too, but we have with. we have a few we have a few veterans yeah. uh, that work for us, and again, they're some of the most savvy, just entrepreneurs. Yeah, because they because they they want to figure it out. Yeah, no, it's great. It comes down to the team, and this this was so great. We're, we're going to wrap up, but the last thing I was going to say is that how can who who can people reach out to if you if you meet those criteria and listen, guys, time is money, so don't don't, don't waste time if you're not within that category or. You know, again, I don't, I don't want to be too harsh, but you know what it comes down to. I, I have an understand. idea. Why don't yeah. you know you you have more uh, insight into your your subscriber base? I yep. think maybe if they reach out to you, and you think you have a hot one. They can come to us, and yeah. then we can go that Hit way. Hit us this up. Way, Hit this us way, up. This way, yeah. keep keep our uh, celebrity in the loop, <laughs> and um, you know, and uh, thank you for having me and yeah. seeing you just build something amazing over your career has been tremendous and I'm honored to be on this podcast and these guys set up a real operation this is impressive oh, it's only going to get better too I'm telling you we'll do, we'll do another round we'll do a part two come, yeah, come, down, come down to Boca and we have a podcast studio I'm, this has been really yeah. incredible and I'm happy to share our story and I uh, can't wait to see what you do with it yeah this. no listen guys success leaves clues I've, I've known these guys for 20 years they don't fuck around they're very disciplined very smart and they're very hungry I mean you, you guys have had a lot of success but you guys don't rest on your laurels you guys are looking to do big things so that's what excites me having people like you it motivates me man we keep going look <laughs> entrepreneurs uh, you know you'll never stop a true entrepreneur from you know figuring it out making money mm. adapting you know adapting and, and, and surviving and, and entrepreneurs get punched in the face and Things don't go your way, right? But you figure it out, and you keep and, and, you, and you keep you keep growing, and you keep achieving. And um, you know, we're excited to see what 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 the future has for us, and I'm excited to see what the future yeah, has for you. I am so. too. And going, that's why we call it the LFG. Let's fucking go. So we just fucking go. Things are good. Go. Keep going. Things are bad. Keep going. Let's fucking go. Pleasure to have you on the show, Josh. Thanks, Can't man. Fucking Great wait, to man. see you. Love you, man. Awesome stuff. That was, that was awesome.